Madam Speaker, today's rule provides for consideration of the Speak Out Act, a straightforward bipartisan bill that passed the Senate unanimously to prevent non-disclosure agreements from silencing victims of sexual assault and harassment. Over the past five years, we've seen numerous cases of women and men disclosing their experiences of sexual harassment in the workplace. As more people came forward, others felt empowered to share their experiences, and offenders who had long gotten away with such reprehensible conduct increasingly faced consequences for their actions. While many high-profile cases focused on movie executives, actors, TV personalities, professional athletes, and elected officials, sexual assault and harassment has been endemic in American workplaces for a very long time and the silencing of survivors with non-disclosure agreements has played a significant role in allowing such misconduct to continue. Over the span of multiple congressional hearings, we've heard firsthand accounts of how harassment affects workers in all industries, from farms to offices to restaurants to colleges. Sexual harassment is pervasive in U.S. workplaces. It's not a problem unique to athletes and celebrities that we see on TV. However, the one thing that many of the stories have in common is that the perpetrators are often people in positions of power. CEOs, bosses, managers, and executives. And these people have access to expensive lawyers and PR teams to exploit flaws in our legal system to protect themselves in silence they've abused. But now, thanks to the courage of survivors and the increasing power of women and other historically underrepresented groups in the workplace, there's a newfound recognition of the social and economic consequences of a status quo that enables or excuses such misconduct. And there's new momentum to ensure that the American workplace environment is safe and fair for all. I'm so encouraged that this Congress has been able to come together and pass legislation to address this problem. Earlier this year, Congress passed bipartisan legislation that now prevents companies from using forced arbitration agreements to resolve con cases of sexual assault or harassment. Forced arbitration clauses are widespread in employment contracts and generally prevent workers from suing their employer in court. And arbitration proceedings overwhelmingly benefit the employer because the employer decides the venue, terms of mediation, and even the arbitrators themselves. Forced arbitration, combined with non-disclosure agreements, meant that victims were kept silent and forced into settlements over which they had little control and kept predators from facing accountability for their actions. Even more concerning, the silencing of survivors of abuse through forced arbitration and non-disclosure agreements thwarts an important tool for preventing future misconduct. Abusers who are not held responsible are free and, in a sense, encouraged to offend again. And given the stigma that victims of such abuse often encounter, they're less likely to come forward if they think the abuse they endured was an isolated incident. With the passage of the Speak Out Act, both of these legal gimmicks will be banned in cases of sexual assault in the workplace, freeing workers and making corporations take responsibility for actually creating a safe work environment. These laws won't end sexual harassment or abuse in the workplace overnight, but it will now be, make it easier for victims to seek justice and deter bad behavior. As a woman and the mother of a daughter, like at least a third of women in the American workplace, both of us have experienced or witnessed such workplace behavior. So I wholly support this legislation. In my view, passing the Speak Out Act should be an easy task for the House of Representatives. It's a simple, sensible bill, and it passed unanimously in the Senate, an institution not always known for finding consensus. Here in the House, the Speak Out Act should receive similar treatment, passage with an overwhelming, if not unanimous, majority. But we've been forced by the obstruction of a number of our more extreme Republican colleagues to expend the time needed to pass a rule, engage in hours of debate, and take four votes to pass the bill in the House when we have numerous pressing items demanding Congress's attention before year's end. The fact that the bill passed with all 100 senators in support in a an evenly divided Senate should tell you that if there were serious problems with the bill, they've already been resolved. And anyone who's actually read the le legislation knows that. NDAs are meant to protect trade secrets and business dealings. Why would anyone try to enable their use in covering up sexual assault? I'm here to get results from my constituents, and that includes measures to ensure that our workplaces are free from sexual assault and abuse. Madam Speaker, I strongly encourage 
all my colleagues to support today's rule, and I reserve the balance of my time.